All right, very special hot take this week. Lots of stuff to cover. Um, the big news this week was the election. So I was watching the Dow futures overnight um, during the election, and there were signals that we were going to see a rally in the market if the red wave happened as was anticipated. Uh, futures were trading up significantly until some of the closely contested races started coming in blue. Uh, at around 10, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, the futures market dropped into negative territory. And the day after the election, November 9th, the Dow traded down more than 2%. So um, all this really made me wonder why political races can affect financial markets. So I did a little bit of digging. Uh, one thought is, is that it will create gridlock, stopping any major legislation being enacted by the Biden administration on, through the rest of the elected term, uh, his elected term. Uh, and historically, such gridlocks have been good for the stock market, particularly when there's a Democratic president in office and the Republicans control at least one house in Congress. So if we look back to the Clinton presidency where a Democratic president was hamstrung by both houses of Congress, the S&P generated over 20% per year. Uh, now fast forward to Obama, where the GOP took control of the House, the S&P generated over 13% of the year, or 13% per year. Uh, there is a link, but it's certainly correlative, not causative, if that's a word. Um, but even if Herschel Walker comes through with a win, it's unlikely that the broader stock market will perform as it did under Obama and Clinton during the last two years of Biden's term. Uh, certain sectors could outperform expectations, but with uh, inflation persisting, the broader stock market is still going to be subject to higher volatility uh, through that period. Uh, so now for some some good news. Uh, November 10th was a wonderful day. A guy like me gets noticeably, is in noticeably good spirits when the market is green and November 10th was one of those days. The SP rallied opening up 4% ending the day in green territory, 5.5% higher than the previous day's close. Now, why did this happen? Uh, while inflation is still at record high levels, the assumption was that we could see a decline from 8.2% inflation to 7.9% inflation. So 7.9 was the expectation. Uh, that alone would have been good uh, coming from 8.2 to 7.9, but the numbers came back even better, 20 basis points lower than that expectation. It brings us back to January, February le levels when the market uh, went and the market went wild. So um, there's still some work to do. 7.7% inflation is still very high. So expect the Fed to increase rates one more time in December and potentially into 2023 as well. And if they do, we could see uh, and we see another 50 basis point decline in inflation in the inflation rate. It would make a good argument that we've done enough hiking and perhaps signal the Fed to stop tightening, um, which would be great for the markets. So. Uh, last week was a great week, uh, the best week we've had since June. The S&P arguably broke through uh, a resistance ceiling and could pick up some steam if it passes through 4,000. Uh, we're still over 18% off on the year, so we have a ways to go. But um, after a year where few things to be happy about uh, occurred, uh, remember that uh, you know good things can happen. Stay the course and hope for good things to come. All right, so that's it for this week. Thanks for walking, watching. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment below. Click the bell to be the first to know. Support us by using one of the resources below or buying some sick merch like this. Uh, just think about it. Bullet Wealth's merch page can be your one-stop shop for all your holiday shopping needs. As always, this does not constitute financial advice. Please talk to a financial professional before making any decisions.